Howdy folks, and welcome back to XCOM 2 with the mighty jingles. XCOM 2, yep, it must be Saturday. I hope you're enjoying the weekend. We're going to get the weekend rolling with another XCOM 2 mission. When last we left our band of intrepid heroes, they just returned from a flawless mission, and they were feeling pretty confident. And that, of course, is when the choice of monthly guerrilla operations popped up from movie voiceover guy. Choice of three operations, Western Asia, Eastern Asia, New Indonesia quite like the look of the Western Asian mission. Lots and lots of lovely intel for expanding our operations into new territories, although I should probably be paying slightly more attention to the shadow chamber analysis of the likely enemies we were going to run into on this mission. Mech, heavy lancers, elite shield bearers, and enemy unknown. What's enemy unknown? Oh well, only one way to find out. Let's kick the tires and light the fires. It's just a monthly gorilla op. I've done dozens of these. It's be a milk run. Be easy. Sky Ranger deployed. In position to drop. Remote reconnaissance has picked up a weak advent signal, slowly being transported by a truck. The target is vulnerable, and as far as we can tell, the data may be tied to the alien operation we recently detected. Take out any hostile forces protecting the vehicle. Secure the AO and recover the assets. Menace 1 5. We've got a bead on the advent data vault near your position. Be advised self detonating charges are in place at the target. Move to disarm and extract the package before its contents are destroyed. Right, done this dozens of times. Got it down to a fine art by now. Quick your baby, up first. Nothing spotted in his initial move forward. Move him all the way up. Quick your baby automatically goes into Overwatch. Rita, back him up. She's got some good cover there. Nothing spotted. Time to stack up. Jingles, heavy weapons, move up. Time to motor. And then Hector. Is it just me, or does Hector have a really big head? Would you look at the size of the heat on that lad? It's got its own weather system. It's like an orange on a toothpick. Oh, Jingles, away. You give the poor wee lad a complex. Aye, he'll away to bed tonight and cry himself asleep on his huge pillow. <laughs> and now circumflexes. Hector, I'm sorry, you know I love you. Right. Circumflexes exosuit allows him a free move to get onto the high ground, which is nice. And he hasn't spotted anything from there yet, so we'll move him up, give him better field of fire, alien activity. Quickie baby automatically goes into Overwatch. Heading out. My turn. Quickie baby up. Move up. Nothing spotted on his first move. Expand his second move, expand my field of vision, into cover, still nothing spotted. Rita, back him up. This is all going very well, isn't it? <laughs> still nothing spotted. Jingles, best foot forward, my son. Give him some support fire. Hector, you can get up there with Rita. Which just leaves Ike and Sirk on. Ike! You and Quickie Baby are best buds. You can get up there and stack up with Quickie Baby. Sirk on! Mm. I don't really want to give up the high ground, but then again, we've got nothing spotted. So, let's move you up. And where can we go from here? What I should have really done here, instead I put him up in... Uh, half cover Roger. by the bus shelter. I should have used the grapple uh, to get him onto the roof of the petrol station. Now, there's the objective. Quickie baby's up and I can hack this security tower. Now on a successful hack there's a decent chance that you're going to actually improve the hacking stat of your specialist. And with nothing else spotted, well it seems worth a try. And I do have the Mark III gremlin now, so see what we can do. 
I haven't yet actually at this stage of my playthrough figured out that I can choose whether or not what I'm going to go for. The small supply cache or the large supply cache as it happens. Well I only have a 39% chance of going for the large supply cache. So the default option is safer. We've shut the tower down. I've recovered a cache of intel. What's next? Moving a up. Cover behind the rock. Enemy spotted. A heavy mech. And what looks like an elite lancer. Right. I'm still in concealment. They haven't seen me. Uh, no, Jingles, you're not going to hit them from there with a plasma grenade. Moving to designated position. So we put you in cover. I'm going to save his move for the moment. Where can I put Zircon? Hmm. That's affirmative. Again, should really have used his grappling hook to get onto the roof of the petrol station. But I didn't. Put him on pistol overwatch instead. On overwatch. Next up. Hector. Really? Yeah, not a bad spot. Gets him closer to the action. Still hard cover from the rocks there. Hector on Overwatch. Ike. He's lagging a bit far behind. Okay, he's armed with a shotgun. The range isn't great, so I'm going to use both of his moves to put him into some decent cover here in the bus shelter. And the reason that I left Jingles only using his first action was so I could put everybody else into Overwatch, with the exception of Ike, who was lagging a bit too far to the rear, and then I could set it all off with a plasma grenade from Jingle's grenade launcher. And this is really going to leave a mark, because it's not just going to hit them, it's going to blow up the truck that they're standing on as well, which means as well as the grenade, they're going to take falling damage. <laughs> and that killed them both. So yes, Jingle's, they might have your position. But they're dead, so it doesn't really matter. Right, who's next? Don't forget, this mission's on a timer. So, five turns remaining before whatever it is we're here to recover detonates. Rita, up we go. And over. Now we're out of concealment, I have to start being careful. I'm going. Quickie baby. That's good. And he, of course, automatically goes into Overwatch. He's got some good solid cover there from the rocks. Not quite sure why there's piles of rocks in the middle of a town, but I'm not going to argue. Cover is cover. Hector! Will do. Up there with uh, Rita. Again, decent cover. And... Ike. Ike's kind of... He hasn't had a really good... He hasn't had a really good deployment so far, has he? He's always been a little bit too far behind. Go, go, go. There we go. Right, moved the squad up, got everybody together again. Couldn't put them all on Overwatch, but everybody's in a position where they're at least able to support each other. Circon, using the exosuit, got the opportunity point, to right? grapple onto higher ground. Which is something I probably should have done earlier. And he can still move after that because the grapple's a free action. And nothing spotted. Put him on pistol overwatch. Quickie baby automatically goes into overwatch and bang. Alien patrol. Two Archons. Okay, quickie baby. Nice shot. Circon on pistol overwatch. Oh. That's not good. Shot failed to connect. Four health. That might have killed him. A plasma pistol can do four damage. Right. Well, it's my turn. So. The first Archon went into battle frenzy. As soon as he took a hit. Grenade out. He's dead. Second Archon. If I can't kill one Archon with a full squad, then I may as well just uninstall. Rita's up next. He's outside of melee range, but if I run and gun, I can use both of our actions on movement and still take a shotgun blast as a free move at the end of the turn. One Rita, in the face. He dodged. Ah, right, okay. 
And now he's got into Battle Frenzy as well. Great. Jingles. Um, well, don't have to shoot from there. I can move up. Not a problem. And that's... Yeah, good chance of hitting. Beam cannon in the face. And he misses. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> on the plus side, because Jingles took a direct fire shot at him, it's now marked him as a target, which means Hector has an improved chance of hitting. In fact, everybody has an improved chance of hitting, but it's Hector's turn. Hector, get closer. This, they better kill it, because they're both standing in the open. Don't let me down, Hector. Nice. Okay, right. What did you expect? Well, it shouldn't have taken half of the squad to kill two Archons, but it's okay. That's the objective. No further enemies spotted. Still got four turns. Ike, up you go. And, yeah, you can go to Overwatch as well. Sircon, rifle Overwatch. Menace 1 5, the clock is ticking. That detonator isn't going to wait. Get to the vault and disarm it before we run out of time. Quickie, baby, that's your shout. You're the electronic warfare specialist. Whatever you say. How close do I have to get him before he can hack the container? Uh, closer than that. Alright. Let's move up to the front of the truck. Nothing spotted. Rita, some Look, good that. cover there. And I can put you into Overwatch. Jingles. Still got four shots left in his beam cannon. Don't need to reload. That'll do. Go. And Jingles in Overwatch. Actor. Starting to run out of cover. Uh, Absolutely. Next to the police car with Jingles will do for now. Overwatch. Ike. It's not a great spot, but it's good enough. And Overwatch for you as well. Circon, long watch. Get ready to cover them with a rifle. Cook your baby into Overwatch automatically. Nothing happens. Right. I'm going to have to get him around the back of the truck. And then open the door. And I, that sound means I've spot. What the hell is that? This one is Oh, that can't be good. And I only have two turns left. Um. Um. Objective sighted. Well, there's the objective. Menace one five. This is Avenger. We have positive confirmation of the target package. Move to acquire. Bypassing security. Sending the gremlin in to hack the chest because I only have two turns remaining. But this is Quickie Baby's final move, which means he's going to be left standing in the middle of the road right in front of these two enemies. So if I can't kill them with the rest of the squad in this turn, I am going to start taking casualties. And we've managed to take the satellite data, so objective complete for now. We're now off the Tiber. Menace 1 5, status confirmed. The charges are inactive and the package is secure. Eliminate any remaining hostiles near the AO. Now I have to just try to arrange a quickie baby to not die. Um, I can't quite get them with a plasma grenade from Rita. Well, I, I can get one or the other, but not both. Screw it. That thing's got a lot of armor. The plasma grenade is going to. It's not going to do much damage, but it's going to take some of the armor off. Now, speaking of removing armor, Jingles is uniquely qualified to do this. Anything that he hits with his beam cannon Absolutely. loses armor. But he doesn't just have the beam cannon. He's also got his shredder gun. Now, unfortunately, the second guy is just outside of range. But that did a fair amount of damage. More importantly, it's now completely removed the armor of that... that... whatever the hell it is. Hector... Just shoot it. <laughs> just, just, just do a lot of damage to it. Hector, you suck. <laughs> All right, Ike, Ike, it's your moment to shine. I got choices here. It's inside melee range, but 
What if it explodes when it dies? Um, I could shotgun it. That's going to take almost all of its health. Uh, yeah, uh, slashing it with a fusion blade isn't guaranteed to kill it either. Uh, screw it, shotgun safer. Nice shot, Ike. Right. It's still not dead, though. But it's on low enough health. But Sircon, if I use Sircon's serial ability, every time every time he gets a kill while this ability's up, he keeps getting free shots. So he should be able to kill it now. And that would give him another shot. Yes, it's down. Come on, Sircon. Well, how about that? Serial ability active. That means you now get a free shot against this guy. Come on. Booyah! When you absolutely definitely have to kill every alien in the room, circumflexes. Except no substitutes. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Oh, and he's only gone and done another flawless mission. <laughs> that thing, by the way, is what's known as a gatekeeper. Um, we never got to see it with the shell open. It has two states. Shell closed when it has extreme damage resistance and it takes an entire squad to put one down. And shell open when it's vulnerable. But has access to all of its very, very nasty abilities. Don't worry. We're going to see more of those later. That's the first time I ever came across a gatekeeper here in XCOM. Mind controlling those things is lots and lots and lots of fun. mission goes this smooth, it's only a matter of time before we regain control of the planet. And I got promoted. Congratulations, Colonel Svensson. Hmm, Rapid Fire or Reaper? Uh, ah, Rapid Fire. Hopefully that'll cheer him up. No, no, it hasn't cheered him up. Oh well, never mind. So, what did we recover from this one? Advent Gatekeeper Shell. Ooh. Tell us about it, Doc. You have done an outstanding job leading the Resistance, Commander. You're not the Doc. You're a movie voiceover guy. Hello, Commander. This is the Doc. Doc, tell us about the Gatekeeper. This specimen, henceforth referred to as the Gatekeeper, seems to harbor considerable psionic power. As with the alien's other unique biomechanical field unit, it will take some time to decipher the systems involved in its function. Meanwhile, in other news, the Psionics Lab is complete. And I have big plans for the Psionics Lab. Or at least I did, but it doesn't quite work the way I was hoping it would. I was under the impression that I would be able to take one of my existing troops and put them in the Psy Lab and retrain them as a Psionics operative. It doesn't work like that. You have to assign a rookie and train them up. So, that's okay. I have a cunning plan. It is in fact a plan so cunning you could stick a tail on it and call it a fox. But more on that later. Also, with plenty of materials recovered from previous missions, I set the proving ground to work developing yet another new experimental powered weapon. That's good, Commander. I'll let you know as soon as the project is ready for deployment. And just as I'm expanding operations into Australia, I get some good news from Doc Tigan in the research lab. I have made a number of interesting discoveries, Commander. I have come to suspect that this creature's unusual appearance is somehow directly connected to its notable psionic aptitude. The aliens always have some reasoning to their actions, even as twisted as it is often revealed to be. Gatekeeper Autopsy has unlocked the Psyamp. It's a weapon for your psionic operatives, and it's just as well because without it, your psyops are going to be about as much use as tits on a fish. Strategic resource located. And more lovely alien alloys for the proving ground to convert into things that go bang. Things are coming along very nicely. We're about to finish construction of a radio relay in Eastern Australia, and that's when I get some even better news from the psionic training facility. The rookie is now an initiate. Depending on who you ask, psionics could be considered the alien's greatest threat. Now our own psi operatives can tap into that same power. 
your psionic initiates actually rank up and train in a different way to the rest of your regular troops. Your regular troops have to go out in the field, do missions, get kills and earn experience in order to progress through the ranks up to colonel. Your psionic initiates works differently. You can actually get them to the maximum rank with every psionic ability just by training them in the Psy Lab. You can of course also include them on missions and the cool thing is that when you do this it doesn't actually interrupt their training. Communication coming in for you now, Commander. Your progress against the aliens over the past month has been significant, Commander. But there is still room to improve if we are going to eliminate the alien threat. Okay. Well, I just recovered a lot of intel from that Gorilla op, so I'm going to spend it to find out what else Advent have in store for me this month. And none of that looks particularly good. And just when I thought things couldn't get any better, as I'm expanding operations into the eastern USA, the Proving Ground comes back with some good news. That experimental powered weapon I was researching? They've given me the Blaster Launcher. This is the best weapon in the game. If you thought Jingle's wrist-mounted shredder gun was good, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. And I'm going to get to use it very, very soon. How soon, Jingles? How soon? We want to see it. Oh, trust me, you're not going to have to wait long. I'm nothing if not a man of my word. Setting course for Sector Two, Australia. Another landed UFO. And we're going to be bringing the Blaster Launcher along for a tryout. This, of course, coming up in the next episode of XCOM 2 with the mighty Jingles and his team of ultimate badasses. Enjoy your weekend, folks. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.